and says, Not that which goeth into a mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth the man. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. But this born-again man has another choice. Yes, there are some things that have sprung up and things that he has battled with, he has lost, and those things have grown up again. But according to Galatians chapter 5, we have another choice. This, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that ye would. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify or kill the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So there is hope. Because choice number two says that he can live in the new nature, in the Spirit, and become an overcoming man. So what we need to do is to actually cut off the fleshly desires so that that new man can grow. Colossians chapter 3 tells us, Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence and covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. But now ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth, lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, they were cut off, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge, after the image of him that created him. Romans 13 says, But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. 1 Peter 2 and verse 2 tells us, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. Matthew 18 says, Wherefore, if thine hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee, for it is better for thee to enter into life, halt or maimed, rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hellfire. Hebrews 12 and verse 1 says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside 
every weight and the sin which thus so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Every one of us has sins and weights that are so easy for us to get into, but we've got to lay them aside and live for God. Romans 6 verses 11 through 19 say, Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. There is a better way. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace." What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness? But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh, for as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. Luke 21 tells us, And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and the cares of this life, so that day come upon you unaware. For as a snare it shall come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. First Corinthians says, I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. All of us have the potential of being a castaway, but we've got the power of God, and if we are willing to do it God's way, we can make it. Ephesians 4 tells us that you put off concerning the former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness." that overcoming man crucifies the flesh with its affections and lust, and by the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God cuts off those branches of carnality which would sap the life of the tree and destroy its spirituality. The pruning process must continue 
or the sucker growths of the old nature will sprout out when least expected. It's amazing how quick they will pop back to life again if we're not careful. Cut them off again. And the new nature will now grow. And he will become a spiritual man. We will now begin to produce some new things known as the fruit of of the Spirit that God wants to grow in us. Galatians 6 verses 22 through 25 say, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. You see, we all have them. We all have to crucify them. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Psalm 1 tells us, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. It's an ongoing process, and the results is he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. How do we do it? But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. For he shall be as a tree, Jeremiah said, planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when the heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. You can do it. Paul told the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians 2, but it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Awesome gifts which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have 
the mind of Christ. Ephesians 5 and 18 tells us, And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. 1 John 4 and 4 says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Paul told the Ephesians in chapter 3, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all, all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. The writer of Hebrews in chapter 5 says, For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. In Hebrews 6 we find, Therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God of the doctrine of baptisms, and of the laying on of hands, and of the resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. And this will we do, if God permit. The truly spiritual man is constantly pressing onward, never feeling that he has already attained but always aware of his own need of vigilance. He is continually seeking God for more of God's Spirit to fill his life, and by doing so brings much fruit to perfection. Now we see why so many fail because they do not know how to deal with the two natures. We also know the secret of victory. Paul told the Galatians in chapter 5, This, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of of the flesh. Today, the choice is yours. As Moses said in Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19, Today I have given you the choice between life and death, between blessings and cursings. Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. Oh, that you would choose life so that you and your descendants might live. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us for this study. Don't forget to remember those two natures are always going to be battling flesh and the spirit never go away so we have got to keep the spirit in control of our lives we are the only ones that can do that the choice is up to you